I'm here today in the really chilly, beautiful pavilion in Merrimack State Park to tell you the story of Frozen Charlotte. I'll share a little bit about the history behind these Victorian dolls. And after I tell you about these creepy little dolls, then I'm also going to walk with you through the chilly forest and read you the story of a corpse going to a ball. You guys, when I tell you it's cold out here, it is cold out here. I'm not even kidding. My fingers, they're in gloves right now, but they are really cold. So I'm going to try to get through this relatively quickly. But to honor the story of Frozen Charlotte, I thought I would do the right thing and put on my coat and come out here where it's really cold and tell you this story. I first learned about Frozen Charlotte dolls when I was working on research for my Llewellyn's Little Book of Halloween. I kind of went down the rabbit hole on the internet is how I learned about it. Um, I was doing some research for Barmbrack, which is an Irish cake, uh, Irish Halloween bread, cakey kind of Halloween bread that you cut it slices and you end up with a little charm in the bread. The charm that you end up with in your little slice tells you something about your future in the upcoming year. And when I was researching that and I was trying to find out different kinds of charms to put in the bread was when I kind of kind of went down a weird track on the internet, like I think we've all done that. And I started reading about these interesting little dolls called Frozen Charlotte dolls. You know, she also is associated with desserts because they would bake her into cakes and stuff. They also called these penny dolls because they sold them for a penny. Uh, of course, a penny was worth a lot more back then. And I'll be honest, when I read about them and then I saw the pictures of them on the internet, I was like, oh my gosh, I kind of want one of these. I kind of want more than one. I got a little obsessed. I thought that it, they were just really creepy and cool. So then I ended up doing a book signing at Haunted STL, which is a paranormal investigation group down in St. Louis. They also have a beautiful shop. And so I was there signing my little book of Halloween and she has so many cool things in that shop. No, this is not a paid endorsement. Um, they're just really, it's a really cool shop. They're really nice people. And they know all about the haunted uh, St. Louis stories and they do ghost tours and ghost investigations. So, perusing the shop down in St. Louis and I looked down and I saw this little doll. Here she is, my little Charlotte. Maybe my first of many. I don't know. I think I'd like to collect these. I think they're really cool, but she's the only one I have right now. I hope that she's focusing. I think, yeah, I think you can see her. She's adorable. And as soon as I saw her, I knew what she was because I had been reading about these on the internet. They've been making these from like 1850 to the 20s. And what they originally were was just a little treat for Victorian kids. They would use them in the bath. They would be like a little bath toy. And sometimes they would bake them into cakes because that was a thing that the Victorians did is they liked to bake little trinkets into cakes and stuff. So that was another way that you would end up with one of these. But then this poem came out and it became really popular in America in the 1800s. A main writer by the name of Seba Smith and he wrote this poem. He says that he read a newspaper article about a girl who froze to death on her way to a ball. It's his inspiration for the poem that he wrote. And it's called A Corpse Going to a Ball. Some people also call it Dear Charlotte. The girl in the story, her name is Charlotte. And yes, it's a morbid little poem. Seba Smith was a humorist, and so it's meant to be kind of tongue in cheek. The poem was a huge hit because it pointed to the dangers of being va too vain. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a cautionary tale to warn uh, young girls that fashion wasn't more important than safety. <laughs> and the poem described a really cold night when the girl was on her way to the ball with her darling Charlie, and she refused to cover up with a blanket or bundle up for the cold because she just, you know, didn't want to cover up her beautiful outfit and she froze to death on the sleigh ride on the way to the ball. So what happened was then the Victorian looked at these little dolls and realized that she's like frozen in motion because a lot of dolls have had, even then had arms and legs that would move. They would have little cloth bodies and they would have porcelain heads and 
porcelain arms and porcelain legs, so they could move and everything. But these little frozen Charlotte dolls are just static, you know, there's no movement to them because they're just a little piece of, basically a solid piece of porcelain. And they began to associate these little bath time dolls or dolls that they would find in cakes with the frozen Charlotte story. So next thing you know, they were calling these dolls Frozen Charlotte. And then they started selling them in little caskets because that's pretty dark. Who doesn't love a little creepy gallows humor for the little kiddos? I just think they're charming, you know, in a, in a kind of morbid curiosity kind of way. And they became hugely popular. You can find these all over the internet these days. Some of them are, you know, in different states. Some of them are like whole and in really good condition. Some of them are broken and you can get just like little pieces of them. So if you're ever at a secondhand store or you're thrifting or you're at a yard sale and you see one of these little gals, pick that up because that's a little piece of history right there. It's really cold out here and I brought some hot tea. And I actually wanted to bring some wood and start a fire and I ran off without it and I was just like, I, I kind of tried to pay attention to the size of her because I was hoping that I could find a casket to keep her in because I really kind of wanted to display her up in my studio. And if you guys look at my video where um, I think I had two, 200 or 300 subscribers, and so I took you guys on a tour of my studio, you can see the little frozen Charlotte doll and some of you guys wanted to know more. The day after Halloween, my son Tristan and I ran to go and hit all of the stores and see if we couldn't find you know, some good after Halloween sale stuff. I walked into Michael's and I found this perfect little wooden casket. So I painted it up and I put some lining in it to make it really cool. And this is where my little frozen Charlotte takes her repose and she lives on that little uh, shelf that's usually right behind me. You guys can hear like dripping all around me and every now and then it kind of sounds like a person's footsteps so I think someone's coming up behind me. Bundle up and get a warm drink. I'm gonna weave you the tale, the sad, sad story of Frozen Charlotte, a corpse going to a ball. Young Charlotte lived by the mountainside in a lonely, dreary spot. No other dwelling for three miles round except her father's cot. And yet on many a winter's eve, young swains would gather there for her father kept a social abode and she was very fair. Her father liked to see her dressed just like some city belle. She was the only child he had. He loved his daughter well. Her hair was black as raven's wings. Her skin was lily fair, and her teeth were like the pearls of white. None with her could compare. At a village just 16 miles off, there's a merry ball tonight. Although the air is freezing cold, her heart is warm and light. And there she watched with an anxious look. Tis a well-known voice she heard, and driving up to the cottage door, young Charles in his sleigh appeared. The mother to her daughter said, these blankets round you fold, for it is a dreadful night, you know, you'll catch your death of cold. Oh no, oh no, the darling cried. She laughed like a gypsy queen. For to ride in blankets muffled up, I never could be seen. My silken cloak is quite enough. You know it's lined throughout. Besides, I have a silken mantle to tie my face about. The gloves and bonnet being on, they jumped into the sleigh, and away they did ride o'er the mountainside and the hills so far away. There's music in the sounds of bells as o'er the hills they go. What a creaking wake the runners make as they bite the frozen snow. And away they then go silently till five cold miles were passed. And Charles, with these few frozen words, the silence broke at last. Such a cold night as this I never knew. My lines I scarce can hold. With a trembling voice, young Charlotte cried, I am exceedingly cold. 
He cracked the whip, he urged his steed much faster than before, until at last five other cold miles in silence. They rode o'er. How very fast the freezing air is gathering on my brow. With a trembling voice, young Charlotte cried, I'm growing warmer now. And away they did ride o'er the mountainside and through the pale starlight until the village inn they reached and the ballroom hove in sight. When they reached the inn, young Charles jumped out and gave his hand to her. Why sit you there like a monument and have no power to stir? He called her once, he called her twice. She answered not a word. He called all for her hand again, but still she never stirred. He stripped the mantle off her brow and the pale stars on her shone, and quickly into the lighted hall her helpless form was born. They tried with all their power her life for to restore, but Charlotte was a frozen corpse and is never to speak no more. He threw himself down by her side and the bitter tears did flow. He said, oh, my dear, an intended bride you never more shall know. He threw his arms around her neck, he kissed her marble brow, and his thoughts went back to the place where she said, I'm growing warmer now. They bore her out into the sleigh, and Charles with her rode home. And when they reached the cottage door, oh, how her parents mourned. They mourned the loss of their daughter dear, and Charles mourned o'er her doom, until at last his heart did break. Now they both slumber in one tomb. And we're back where we began. I hope that you guys enjoyed the story of Frozen Charlotte and the poem and all of the history behind these interesting dolls. Make sure you hit the like button. The subscribe is right there. Make sure you click that. Here are a few more videos that I think you might enjoy. Everybody bundle up and hug your loved ones. And remember as always to be your magic. Bye. Merrimack steak, Mark? <laughs>